Let me promise you something before I start. I can promise you, if I switch up these two lights, it's going to be much more interesting. So with your permission, let me switch up these two lights. Yes. And one more thing. Let me be close to the scene of action. Yes. <laughs> he moved on you. <laughs> so it's supposed to be on, yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, good afternoon once more. So I can well imagine what you're feeling right now. You've been through hell. <laughs> and you've survived. You're experiencing the relief of the survivors of Normandy. So right now you're feeling like this boy here. <laughs> and pretty soon tonight, I'm sure, all of you will be Santa Claus. <laughs> The experience of a medical education is transformational. It is like moving to a new country. At first, you don't know the language, all the customs, all the concepts. But then almost imperceptibly, it all changes. How the words you routinely use now, you didn't even know existed. Words like, phrenico pleural ligament. <laughs> Flexor carboiridialis longus. HMG coe reductase. Adiponectin. Spinocerebellar tract. Status epilepticus. Logistic regression. Liquefactive necrosis. Atherosclerosis. And red match syndrome. I can go on the whole night. In the beginning, they all sounded like this. Perhaps even now it sounds like this. <laughs> and when we gave you the block exams, they were very much like this. You didn't understand a single word of what was I said. <laughs> and I don't blame you at all if you felt like begging your <laughs> During your 72 weeks of clinical rotation, you'll be exposed to clinical scenarios as outlandish as this. <laughs> By the end of it, you will know that the ICD system, the International Classification of Diseases, has categorized more than 13,600 diagnoses. 13,600. And for each one, we have remedies that include more than 6,000 drugs, and 4,000 medical and surgical procedures. Again, I will not blame you if you feel like the ground is slipping from under your feet. So, that reminds me of my days as a medical student. I was in first year, all greenhorn and wet behind the ears, and just as eager as you to become a big doctor, preferably today itself. There was this deadly anatomy professor. By the way, why are prof anatomy professors so deadly? <laughs> I have still to figure that out. So this was this deadly professor here. He was a fellow from Guy's Hospital, London. The same hospital where Henry Gray wrote his Bible, Gray's Anatomy. His was the only lecture when I did not actually sleep. Because I did try to catch up on my REM sleep with just about all other lectures. Not just because he was, we were scared of him, of course we were scared of him. It was the quality of his lectures. I used to listen to him with rapt attention. No notes. And when I came out of the lecture hall, it was all there in my head. And I didn't have to read it again. Now, the same professor, he never smiled. Rarely, if at all. And he spoke very little, except during lectures. And come exam time, his viva voce used to be one holy nightmare. He used to have this anatomy specimen in his hand. 
and he'll have this probe in his other hand. He'll pick up a structure from deep inside, and he won't even ask a question. He'll just do like that. Meaning, what is it? And you have to start talking. And you have to keep speaking, keep speaking, till he does not drop that structure and pick up another one. And that's how this nightmare used to continue in this dissection hall for the next 45 minutes. Well, after I had passed out of anatomy, one day I met this professor. I mean, I just saw him. And for some reason, he was smiling at something. And I said to myself, hey, this guy is human after all. Well, I learned a lot from him, and not just anatomy itself. May his soul rest in peace. So the carry home message I want to give you here is, leave the world a tad better than what it was when you reached there. You will not be here forever, but your legacy will live on. You're all very lucky people, though you don't realize it. You're graduates of anyway, where you're treated like babies. When you were burning the midnight oil, or letting time slip by, or taking your caffeine boosts, or any other boost for that matter. <laughs> there was always a comforting hand to hold on to, or shoulder to pry on. When nothing else worked, you tweeted. <laughs> or you hit Facebook. You wrote, whoop, whoop, three more days and I'm off this rock. <laughs> <laughs> or you wrote, Mirka, here I come, yay! <laughs> Hijack somebody's wall and you insert it, what we should call carry medical school image. And you got likes. You got 57 likes. You got many, many, many likes.